In today's video, we're going to take all the things we've learned in our first five beginner um, videos and we're going to take that information and we're going to create a golf ball marker. We're going to use the techniques that we've learned. I'm going to go through it fairly slowly so that you can follow along and create this golf ball marker. And I believe that will be something uh, that will get you started in creating your own models and thinking about how you might want to make them. Before I do that, I'd like to give a shout out to the folks who have signed up on our Patreon. They are Moo Cow or Tim, Daniel Dudley, and James Blackwell. Thanks, guys, for signing up. Really appreciate it. It helps a lot with the channel. Uh, currently, we're saving up for a new... Uh, microphone so that we can do voiceovers after the event rather than having to do everything during the actual video so uh, appreciate that that's what the funds are going to go for we want to improve the channel uh, anybody else who's interested in signing up please go ahead in the comments below you'll find the link to our patreon please go ahead and sign up thanks okay so we have a rough sketch of what our ball marker is going to look like and what we're going to do is we're going to create this model create the ball marker and uh, 3D print it so we can see what it looks like uh, at the end. So to start with, as always, I'm in part design. I always start my, my models in part design. So if you're not in part design yet, go to your workbenches and pick part design, get yourself into part design. And then um, what we're going to do is we are going to start a new file in part design. So what we do is we click up here to new file. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to save this file. So we're going to save it as, and I'm going to just save it as uh, beginner six. And that's what I'm going to call my file. So now looking at that sketch, I would say we are looking at a dome shape. Probably the easiest way to create that dome shape is going to be a revolve. We know how to do a revolve. We already did that in uh, one of the lessons. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to our model. We're going to create a part. And then we're going to create a body. And now we've created the body, we're going to create a sketch. And we're going to do it, when I do revolves, I tend to do them on the XZ plane. It, only because in my mind, the XY plane is, is uh, looking straight down on it. So this way would be sideways looking at it. You don't have to do it that way. You can if you want. You can use a different plane. Uh, but this is how I do it. So I'm going with the X, Z plane. I'm going to say OK. So now I'm in a sketch. And I'm just zooming out a little bit. I have noticed in this version of FreeCAD, and I should show you my version. So I am on the latest version. This is the latest stable version. It's 0.19. I do believe it gets called 0.19.1 but it's revision number 24276 git. Um, its release date is the 11th of March in 21. And I'm running it on Windows 10. And it's a 64-bit Windows 10 that I run on. So just so you know, if there's anything different about your version, it could be that we have different versions of FreeCAD running. I've also increase the size of my icons that's just so that you can follow along you don't need them to be this big i've created them this big just to make it easier to follow along okay to get started what i'm going to do is i'm going to start to draw this profile so i'm going to use a polyline click on the polyline and i'm going what i'm going to do is i'm going to create uh, half the shape that we need for this revolve so I believe it starts with a dip down there, piece across here. Okay, I tried guys, but when I use OBS, the mouse gets shrunk because of 
uh, a bug in OBS. So we're going to try and work around that. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so let me get rid of that guy. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. I'm going to make these horizontal as they should have been, and this guy vertical. Now I have changed my constraints to show up black, and I did that because one of our viewers said uh, they were having trouble to see um, the constraints when they were red, so I've changed it so that they are now black. Okay, so getting back to our shape, I think actually that line there is superfluous. And what I want to do is run a couple of radii. And I think what I'm going to do is run them from this center point just down to here, start here, come up here. And I'm going to do a second radii, a radius from here to here. So that's going to be the start of my uh, shape. And then I'm going to connect these two guys here. And then I actually want this line to be down here. So I'm going to tell it that those two lines are coincident. This guy, remember, this is the coincidence. So it's a, a cross with a dot in it. I hit that. Those two lines are now on the same point. And then I'm going to bring this side down a little bit. And I'm going to make this guy and this guy coincident. And here it is. I squashed my shape a bit. Okay, it didn't love that. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete that constraint. So I can just bring it up a little bit. There we go. All right. So now I've actually realized that this constraint here is one of these, which is a fixed or point. It's fixing this part of this radius to this line. So I'm gonna click on that and delete that constraint so I can move this down. I want this down. I want this line actually to be up there. And the reason I want that is because that makes that 45 degrees of the total circle. That's our basic shape that we're gonna create. And you probably remember with a revolve, you have to close this line here. If you don't close this line, you'll end up with a revolve that doesn't work. And now from our dimensions, we're going to create some uh, constraints on here. So I, I already have some geomet uh, geometry constraints. So I have a horizontal, horizontal, and a vertical. Um, this guy down here has a vertical. And this guy is attached to this line. So I'm actually going to attach this guy to this line. So we use that little guy there that's the fix a point on an object. Click that. Now that's fixed and that's fixed. So now I want to dimension these radiuses. And we've got to be a little careful that we don't obliterate our shape. So we're going to dimension them first. Uh, yeah, they're actually massive at the moment. So they need to be a radius of 21.5, which is half a golf ball. So we want the inside to be the golf ball size. And then this guy is going to be, we have a one and a half millimeter thickness. So this one should be 23. And then I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on. Then I'm going to dimension this as 1.5. So now I have my shape here. And then I know my outside shape is 45 um, diameter. So I have a one and a half wall there. And I want to have another one and a half. Oh, I see what it is. So so it's 46 to the outside, and I want to add another um, two millimeters. 
So that would be 48 and half of 48 is 24. So I'm going to dimension. So it's a little unwieldy at the moment, but I'm going to dimension from this point. Going to dimension from this point over to remember our, <laughs> remember if you do that I do that often I don't know why I do it so often if you do this where I just rotated the thing remember this one with the magnifier if I click that everything goes straight again so I'm going to click that guy and that should be actually that's the wrong point so I'm going to cancel that it should be this point and I'm going to go over to this point. And that should be 24. So I'll bring it all back in. And remember this one over here, it looks like a piece of paper with a magnifier in it. That brings everything back to the middle. So that looks like our shape is fully constrained now. What we've done is we've had two radii, um, a length, from the center to the outside. So that gives us that diameter of 48 and then a thickness of 1.5 for the, for the edge. So it's fully constrained as you can see, it's all in green. So I'm gonna click close. And I'm going to revolve that sketch. And there is our golf ball marker shape, which is basically you can drop a ball into it. And now you know you're in the center of the ball. Uh, there should be a little bit of clearance on the ball. And this lip you can make as big as you like. I, I just made a little tiny lip, but you can make it a bigger lip if, you've, if you want to put a hole in it to attach it to your bag or something. You certainly could do that. So... Now we've done that, if we look back at our sketch, all we need to do now is to create the marks that we want. Now I chose these marks arbitrarily. I chose a, a line with three dots. So you, if you're marking your ball and somebody else has a line with three dots, you could choose to have a line with two dots. You could choose just to use the dots. Um, the line is in the center of the ball. So that's a good line to line up for putting it's a good line to line up for your direction of your drive. So that's why I did that. Okay, so let's put those on. Should be fairly simple from here on out. Um, we want to draw the lines to cut the marker holes. So that's another simple sketch. So we're staying in the same body. We're going to hit sketch. This time it's going to be on the XY plane. So it's going straight down through it. We're going to say okay. And as always, the model disappears. Now, if you want to see the model, remember you can go to the model tab, see the part is grayed out. So I'm clicking on the part, I hit space bar, there's my model back. So now I can see my model, I'm actually in the top looking down the hole. And that's basically where we want to be. That'll give us some idea of how to draw this sketch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first line, which goes like this. So I just selected the square and drew a square. And then I know I want three holes. So I'm just going to draw three diameters. One. I'm going to put one on this line because it needs to be on that line. And one over here. And I'm not worried about dimensioning or anything when I first put them in. So that's roughly the shape that we want. So now we're going to constrain the geometry before we start constraining dimensions. So the first thing I recognize is that this should be symmetrical. So I'm gonna do it symmetrical around the center point. So we know if we select this point, and then we select this point, we select the center point and tell it that it's symmetrical, that we now have a symmetrical square or rectangle around this point here. So it's symmetrical this way, and it's symmetrical this way. So all we need to do with that is to give it some dimensions, and that will lock this guy in place. So before we do dimensions, we're going to now 
tie up the geometry on this guy. Now remember, I'll zoom in so you can see. Remember with this guy, I used, I put this point intentionally on this axis, so it's locked there. So that, I can move it in and out, I can move it up and down, but I can't move it left and right. It's locked on that line. So the other thing I know with these dots is I want them all to be in line horizontally. So I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one, and just hit horizontal. And that's going to align them horizontally across here. So now I also know I want them all to be the same size. So I'm going to select this one, this one, and this one. This time I'm selecting the outside of the circle, not the center point. And I'm going to tell it that I want those to be equal. Now all I need to do is dimension one of them and they'll all have the same dimensions. So let's go ahead and we will do that. I'm going to take a dimension for a diameter. We'll dimension this middle one and we wanted that to be 3.3 .3, which is about the size of you know allow the tip to go into the hole to, to draw the mark on the ball. So if you have a thicker pen, you might want to do a thicker um, dimension there. So I'm just going to grab that dimension and pull it out of the way because I like it to be out of the way. So now I know because these are all in line, if I dimension one from here to here, that dimension will stick. And I know that the dimension of this piece here is going to be 3.3. .3, so let's go ahead and we'll do that. 3.3. Three, so same pen tip width. I'm just going to take that over there so I can see it. So this is 3.3 .3, and I want this center to be 4 from this edge. So that would make it 1.65 plus 4. Well, we don't have to worry about the 1.65. Let's just call that 2 plus 4. So we're going to say that's going to be 6. So I'm going to touch that, touch that, that, and we'll make that 6. And you see they all move up together because they're they're in line. They have to be, they have to move together because they're in line. So we're getting close to being constrained. Now one thing I do know is I want these holes to be symmetrical around this line. So I'm going to take care of that now. I'm going to go there, there, this line, and say symmetrical. So now they're symmetrical either side. We know their size. We know they're in line this way. So the only thing we need for these guys is a dimension across here, which we have as 36. So let's do that. And we're going to say 36. Oops, that seems to be a lot. Let me see. Maybe uh, my dimensions here are not good. Yeah, 36 is too much. That's, I'm going to change that. So, I'm designing as I go here. That should be more like 26. I think that would look better. There we go. That's more what I had in mind. So we're going to go with that. Now you can see they've already changed color. So these these circles now are constrained. And this guy is not. So if we go to our tasks, you can see we have one degree of freedom. It's going to be this length here. Let's see how it looks. So the one degree of freedom, it's showing these points here, which is that length. So I'm going to remember once you've clicked this button it highlights these already so you want to deselect them so you click a left mouse over there they've gone red again and now we're going to put dimension across there so we can just pick that line and that dimension um we said 40 but i actually think 36 is plenty so i'm going to go with 36. so again my sketch was a rough idea of what i wanted my design changed as I visualized it here. I want to make sure that it, it does what I want it to do. So I have a fully constrained sketch here. And I'm going to close that. And now you can see my fully constrained sketch is sitting in 
the mouth of this guy. So I want to pocket that all the way through. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to say pocket. Then we're going to say through all. And if I flip this over a little bit, shift it up, flip it over. Now you can see my ball marks are there. So I'll say OK. So immediately you can see we have the shape that we wanted. We have a line. We have three dots. We spaced them out the way that we wanted them as we designed it, as we went through from our rough sketch. We have that ball shape, so the ball should drop in there. We have just a tiny lip. Again, you don't have to have a lip, or you can have a bigger lip and put a hole in it, so you could attach it to your bag. Um, and then the next thing we want to do, so the last thing, when we're finished, we know we want this size is a good size. Now we want to apply any kind of radii or chamfers that we want. And what I would do is I would chamfer this down so that there's not much material left. That way you got a good chance of your pen reaching through. Um, I wouldn't worry about chamfering the other side, but I chamfer this side for sure. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. I'm going to pick a chamfer. And a one millimeter, remember this is only one and a half mil thick, so I think that's good. And I'm going to chamfer this side as well. And you can chamfer. I'm going to try chamfering anyway. The whole end there. See how that goes. So now I have just that little lip there. Everything else is chamfered. That's good. I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to pick this line. I'm going to create a chamfer. And I think... That'll be good. I'm going to add edges, add, pick that edge, pick that edge, say OK. Now I've got my ball marks chamfered, so it's only a tiny piece of material, so my pen should reach through it. And that is the design that I want. Now, as I said, if you want to increase this lip and put a hole in it so you can hook it up to your bag, that's fine. Um, I generally keep mine in the pocket, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. But obviously, if you want to practice, that's something you can certainly do. But now we have a fully constrained sketch. It's all set, and ready to go. We're gonna 3D print. I'm gonna select the chamfer. So one of the things you can do when you're printing, if you wanted to print it without the chamfers, you could select the pocket and export that and it wouldn't have these chamfers included so I'm I'm going to select chamfer and export it because it's going to give it the name um, part chamfer so I'm going to do that I'm going to put it in my 3d printing and say save and then we'll take a look at it in our Prusa slicer and see what it looks like Okay, so this is the latest Prusa slicer. All you do is you say file, import, I'm importing an STL. And it's that beginner six. Open that guy. And of course, if we're 3D printing this, the, the orientation is going to be this edge downwards. So we want to rotate that. So we're going to do that now. We're going to rotate that by this guy by 90 degrees. And we'll get it somewhere close. And then we're going to say lay flat. So now it's laying flat on there. So we can see that guy is sitting flat on our surface. We're going to print it that way up. Of course, with uh, 3D printing, you can actually print these domes and you don't need any support. So I'm not going to actually add support to it. So I'm going to slice it. And then we'll take a look at the slicer. So you can see it printing it. Print, 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 print. And it's just going to print it like that. Looks good. And it's going to take 21 minutes. 
And the way I have my Prusa slicer set up is if I hit this button, it will automatically upload it to my printer. And then we'll print one out and take a look at it and see what it looks like. It only takes 21 minutes, so we'll just we'll print the whole thing. See what it looks like. We'll try it on a golf ball and see if we've got the right answer here. So I press this button here. It says start printing after upload. Hit that button. Boom. It's already up and loaded and printing. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel for more videos, and please take a look at our Patreon. My patrons have had this video for over a week, and they get access to my free CAD files, the STLs, and any other pieces I use in making the videos. So uh, if you're interested, please look at the links below. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.